Hello everybody, my name is Paul, also known as Astro Noob, uh, on quite a few of the uh, astronomy forums out there. I've been an Optron user for years. Uh, I am not a paid employee of uh, Ioptron, and they are not paying me to do this. I just simply uh, like Ioptron's products. I started using a Cube Pro, or actually a Cube R80, uh, a few years ago. I have an IEQ45, I have a Mini Tower Pro, I have a Smart EQ, and a Smart EQ Pro. To say that I like the product is an understatement. So, first of all, that's where I'm coming from. Uh, I'm going to try to give an unbiased report on this mount, uh, but again, I do like the products. And they have not disappointed me. This is the new iOptron ZEQ25GT. The Z, there you are. By the Z, by the Z, by the beautiful Z. This is a evolutionary departure from a German equatorial mount. It is not a GEM. It's a CEM, a Chinese equatorial mount. This is an evolutionary change that uh, I think is going to set the standards for all the other manufacturers. As you can see by this particular design, the mount head is very small. It doesn't have to be big. It has a hardened, a hardened fulcrum pin right here in the center of the mount, and all the weight of this mount is centered on that fulcrum pin. The deck shaft is here, the RA shaft is here, everything and all the weight and the control boards here and there, they're all centered over the, the mount fulcrum point. Consequently, all the weight, the payload weight, is right down to the center of this tripod. So it's an excellent design, it's evolutionary, and they have set the, they have set the standard. All right, let me tell you a little bit about this mount and some of its unique features, at least what I consider unique. Counterweight shaft. Uh, users at latitudes of, say, 10 degrees and below, you know, Singapore comes to mind, I guess. When those users lower that latitude down to the, to the zero or zero to ten uh, degree mark, the counterweight shaft will always have a tendency to hit the tripod leg. Those users have always been forced to use a pier. I actually thought about that. They've got an adjustable counterweight. When this mount is set down to zero, this counterweight shaft will clear the tripod leg as, as well as the counterweight. I don't have the counterweight on here right now because I'm going to be moving the mount and I don't want the counterweight shaft uh, gearing the, the RA shaft out of position. Anyway, starting from, uh, well, let's start right here. There's a little bubble level in here. Again, I wouldn't trust it. Get yourself some carpenter's levels and rules and set your mount up level it in, indoors using your carpenter's levels and squares. And then, and then mark your zero points on the deck axis and RA axis. It's just good practice. And then you never have to, never have to really trust this. This bubble level, it, it's okay. It's a good starting point as long as you've got that mount level. Another unique feature on these mounts is this little chrome switch right here. Get locking knobs and tight out of your head. This deck, this deck axis, for example, is moving, oh, maybe about two or three degrees, and it's tight. It's spring loaded. This little switch is a declination switch. It's either on, or it's off. If it's off, you can rotate this seven ways from Sunday and lock it in whatever position you want for balancing. It's extremely handy for balancing. Once you're done, put it back to your zero position and lock it. Same thing holds true for the declination shaft, except the switch is on the other side of the mount. Unlock it, balance your mount, balance your OTA rather, return to zero position, lock it. An excellent feature. We have some items on this side of the mount uh, in terms of ports. The guide port is up here in the, in the RA cover. You have an Ioptron, an Ioptron port that's reserved, I guess, for focusers or dome control. I don't know. I've never had occasion to use it. They never really explain fully what it's for or if, even if it's in use. You have your hand, you have your hand controller uh, input and you have a reticle input. The polar scope on this particular mount is fully illuminated. It plugs in here. It's a tight fit on the bottom of the RA axis. It's fully adjustable for illumination. Uh, regarding the polar scope, it's got a really neat feature that I absolutely love. The polar scope is open all the time. It's never blocked by a declination shaft. You never have to move your OTA 30 degrees out of the way or, or a polar line without the OTA on it because you can always see through it. It's aligned at the factory. So it eliminates all that, all that hassle about polar aligning or about aligning the polar scope axis to the mount axis 
which has always been an issue for, for people. You just set it and forget it. All right. Oh, look down here. This tripod tray, it's die cast aluminum. It's about 3 16th of an inch thick and you are never going to break it. You will break your wrist before you can over tighten this mount or break the tripod legs off at the top because this is one sturdy tripod screw. Good job. All right. The latitude and azimuth adjusters, typical layout right in front of the mount. The locking screws for latitude. There are two, one on this side of the mount, one on the other side of the mount. Easy operation, loose and tight. The, the declination lock, again, you're thinking clamping that, no, just the switch. Uh, what I'm gonna do now, well actually before that, on the other side of the mount, on the, on the main control board, your on-off switch, uh, declination, declination port for the deck cable, and the power port for, for uh, power. Does not have, it does not run on batteries, you must use a power tank or an external power, so, power source for this mount. I'm going to turn this mount on right now. I do have a 7 amp power supply uh, plugged into it. And I'm just going to illustrate to you uh, the slewing sounds of this mount. The deck, or the RA axis and the declination axis both have the same size ring gear, they both have the same size worm. What that does, it gives you one sound. On other mounts, you have different size ring gear and worm gear, so you get a nice low hum in RA, and when you, deck, when, when, when you operate the deck, you get a screaming noise. This noise is constant, I love it, uh, and it's not very loud at all. I'm going to slew to uh, simulate slewing the coach app. Name stars, and I think coach app is number 102 in Ioptron's menu. It certainly is. Hit enter. It should, yeah, there it goes. That's as loud as this mount gets. That's at a, a, the max slew rate. Okay, it beeped, it's on coach app. This is again, we was, we're assuming that this is pointed north that, and that the, the mount's gonna line and, and a one star alignment at least has been performed. All I do at this, it, well, let me get, I was gonna return to zero position, but first, that was speed nine. At speed six, I'm gonna slew it in RA. I don't even know if you can hear that. At slew speed number five, which equates to 64 times, I can just barely hear it from, from, from one foot away. And the duck is the same. So I'm gonna return to zero. And we're gonna, now we're gonna mount an OTA and a counterweight on this, and we'll see what it sounds like then. Quiet, smooth, I love it. Not gonna wake any neighbors up with that. All right, we'll be right back after we get an OTA and a counterweight installed.